In this week's Weekly Funny Jokes, we bring you our best joke compilation of the week. These jokes are sure to make you laugh, from the first one to the last one. This is our first week starting to tell our story jokes with the use of artificial intelligence. This week we bring you three jokes, starting with a joke about a fortunate nun, until we end with a joke about many, many children. So, sit back, get the popcorn, and get ready to laugh until your stomach ache. Break it down. In today's story joke, we tell you a hilarious tale about a nun. All right, picture this. Nuns, those holy rollers who dedicate their lives to spiritual service, living in cozy little spots called monasteries or convents. They're like superheroes with vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, ready to tackle life's challenges armed with prayers and kindness. You'll find them across different Christian flavors, Roman Catholic, Oriental Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox, Lutheran, Anglican, and even Presbyterian. And let's not forget the Buddhist tradition, where they're called bhikkhuni, extra vows included. Now, joining the sisterhood isn't just a walk in the park, it's like a spiritual boot camp. First, you've got the postulancy phase, a trial run for six months to two years. Then comes the novitiate, where you live the nun life without the official vows. After some soul searching and a wardrobe change, it's time for temporary vows. And if you're really feeling the nun vibes, you go all in with the perpetual profession, those lifelong vows. But hey, being a nun isn't just about praying and playing dress up. There are some big responsibilities too. If you're elected to lead the pack, you're either an abbess or a prioress, or you might just be called Mother Superior which sounds like a title straight out of a superhero comic. And let's not forget the fashion. Traditional nun attire includes a tunic, a scapular, and of course, that iconic veil. Some even rock a massive rosary on their belt, because why not add a little bling to your spiritual journey? But wait, there's more. After the Second Vatican Council, some nuns decided to ditch the old school habit and go for a more modern look. Talk about a wardrobe makeover. Buckle up, folks. It's time to fasten that safety belt nice and tight because we're about to embark on a roller coaster ride of laughs that'll have your stomach doing backflips like it's training for the Olympics. Get ready for the funniest joke in town, a joke so hilarious, it's practically legendary. So, grab hold of your sides and brace yourselves for the comedic journey of a lifetime. We're diving headfirst into a joke that'll have you snorting with laughter and clutching your belly in pure joy. It's the kind of joke that leaves you gasping for breath and begging for more. And hey, if you're prone to laughing fits, you might want to grab a tissue or two because this joke is guaranteed to have you in stitches. We're talking tears streaming down your face, cheeks hurting from grinning ear to ear, and maybe even a few snorts thrown in for good measure. So. Sit back, relax, and get ready to unleash those belly laughs because this joke is about to knock your socks off. One Monday morning, a nun approached the priest with a look of guilt etched on her face. Father, she began, her voice trembling slightly. I must confess, I did something quite sinful over the weekend. I, I was with a man. The priest, taken aback by her admission, tried to maintain his composure. My child, he said solemnly, such actions are gravely sinful. You must repent and seek forgiveness. The nun nodded as she awaited the priest's guidance. What should I do, father? She asked, her voice barely a whisper. With a sigh, the priest pondered for a moment before delivering his unusual remedy. Sister, he said with a hint of seriousness, I want you to go and eat a lemon immediately. Confused, the nun blinked in disbelief. Eat a lemon, Father? Will that cleanse me of my sins? She inquired, hoping for absolution. The priest shook his head slightly, a faint smirk tugging at the corners of his lips. No, my dear sister, he replied, a mischievous twinkle in his eye. But it will wipe that smile off your face.
In today's story joke, we delve into the dark world of the house of ill repute, unknown to many and home to a few. The joke, however, is hilarious. All right, buckle up, folks, because we're about to take a wild ride through the fascinating history of the world's oldest profession, ladies of the night and houses of ill repute. If ladies of the night are the OG profession, then houses of ill repute must be the OG public institutions. Am I right? But let's not jump the gun. Before we get to the modern day debate on legalizing these houses, let's rewind to ancient times. Turns out, ladies of pleasure weren't just about making a quick buck. It had its roots in religious rituals, with temples doubling as pleasure palaces. Fast forward to the Greeks, who took houses of ill repute to a whole new level of officialdom, complete with taxes on the ladies' earnings. And don't even get me started on the Romans, with these luxurious houses offering everything from hairdressing to post-coital ablutions. But the party didn't stop there. Medieval princes were running red-light districts, and even Elizabethan-era theater moguls were getting in on the action. Throughout history, we've seen countries swing between permissiveness and prohibition. But one thing's for sure, the world's oldest profession just keeps on trucking. So, what's the moral of the story? Well, it seems like we never learn from history. But hey, at least we can say one thing for sure. When it comes to the world's oldest profession, there's never a dull moment. All right, gather around, folks, because I've got a tale that'll have you rolling on the floor with laughter faster than you can say, Natalie. So, picture this. There's this guy, right? He strolls into a house of ill repute with a gleam in his eye and a wad of cash burning a hole in his pocket. And what's his request? Only the finest lady in the joint, none other than the illustrious Natalie. Now, the folks at this executive house, they're not ones to mince words. They straight up tell this guy, hey buddy, Natalie's top shelf and she aren't cheap. You sure you wanna splash the cash on her? But does our hero flinch? Oh no. He's resolute. Yes, he declares with all the determination of a man on a mission. I want Natalie. And just like that, the deal's sealed. Our guy rents Natalie for a cool $2,000, making it rain like he's auditioning for a rap video. But here's the kicker. This isn't just a one-night stand affair. Oh no, our hero's back the next night, demanding Natalie once more. Now, Natalie's not used to this kind of repeat business. She's flabbergasted, to say the least. Whoa there, cowboy, she probably said. Nobody's ever shelled out this much dough two nights running. But hey, if you're game, let's do this. And so, the dance continues. Night after night, our guys back for more Natalie action, dropping $2,000 like it's pocket change. But here's where it gets juicy. On the fifth night, after their rendezvous, Natalie's feeling all warm and fuzzy inside. You know, she purrs, you must be someone pretty darn special to keep coming back like this. Where are you from? And what does our hero say? Oh, just Europe, he replies casually, as if he's about to drop the punchline of the century. And Natalie, bless her heart, takes the bait. Europe, you say. Funny you mention it. I've got family there. But before she can say another word, our guy drops the bombshell of all bombshells. Yeah, I know. Your father passed away a couple of days ago. Your sister sent me to deliver your $10,000 inheritance. <laughs> Do you know the truth about many children? In today's cartoon story joke, we delve in deep. Ladies and gentlemen, gather round for a joke that's about to deliver a kick. And yes, it's the unexpected kind you are hoping for. So, strap in and hold on tight because this joke is about to hit you like a bolt from the blue. Picture this, history will always remind us that tucked away in the rustic countryside of Shuya, Russia, lived a man named Fyodor Vasilyev, whose story is the stuff of legend. Fyodor, a humble peasant with a knack for making history, holds the record for the most children born to one mother. And who might that extraordinary mother be? 
none other than Mrs. Vasiliev, a woman whose remarkable fertility journey surpassed all expectations. Now brace yourself for the numbers game. Mrs. Vasiliev wasn't just popping out a kid or two. Oh no, she was on a roll. In 27 births, she delivered 16 pairs of twins, seven sets of triplets, and four sets of quadruplets. Yes, you heard that right, quadruplets. A total of 69 children from the 27 births to this amazing woman. She was like a factory churning out bundles of joy, faster than you can say maternity leave. Talk about keeping the family tree busy. One thing's for certain. She was a force to be reckoned with. So, here's to you, Mrs. Vasiliev, the unsung hero of the maternity ward, the queen of quads, and the matriarch of multiples. Cheers to the ultimate baby whisperer. No strap yourselves in for today's joke, because perhaps that can be surpassed. Once upon a time in the quaint little town, there lived a woman named Mrs. Jones. Now, Mrs. Jones was not your average neighbor. Oh no, she was what you might call an eccentric enthusiast. Her quirk? An inexplicable infatuation with the name James. Whether it was the rhythm of the syllables or the mystique behind it, nobody quite understood her James obsession. Yet, Mrs. Jones was resolute. She declared to anyone who would listen that if she ever found herself knee-deep in motherhood, her offspring would bear the name James. Little did she know, fate had a wicked sense of humor. In a twist that could only happen in a story like this, Mrs. Jones found herself not with one or two children, but a whopping 60. And yes, you guessed it. Each one was baptized with the name James. James number one, James number two, James the 60th. It was a James extravaganza. Now, you might wonder, how did Mrs. Jones manage this James Legion? Well, that's where the tale takes a delightful turn. One fateful afternoon, her dear friend, Mrs. Perkins, couldn't contain her curiosity any longer. How on earth do you manage with all those James? She asked, her eyes wide with wonder. Mrs. Jones, with a mischievous twinkle in her eye, leaned in conspiratorially. Ah, my dear Perkins, she replied. That's where the magic lies. Thanks to my colorful romantic history, every James in my brood sports a different surname. <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here. <laughs>